Hello there. I just wanted to preface this video with probably a warning of some description, mostly to YouTube. To YouTube yourselves, I'm doing this video not to promote white supremacy, not to promote the shootings, not to promote the killers. I'm not doing it for that reason. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I feel that there has to be a conversation that needs to be talked about. And that conversation is about white supremacy, about how people on the right, in my opinion, don't seem to want to even tackle the situation that there are such people as white supremacists, and these people can lead into terrorisms and terrorist acts. And I think that we need to actually address this. And I'm not saying that I'm a prominent member of any sort of form of community at all, but from somebody that is right-leaning, I would like to be able to initiate the actual conversation and be able to say that these are what my findings are and I feel that this is something that we really need to talk about. So with that actually being said, YouTube, I'd also like to address people that may have watched this video as well. I'm not advocating gun control. I'm not advocating against gun control in this video. I'm merely addressing the talking points of why these people did what they did and trying to address those reasons rather than getting drawn into a gun debate that really does not affect me any which way at all. But if I have to take rights away from normal civilians to try and stop people that don't care about the rights in the first place, then I think you're losing the battle. The point of this video, again, isn't about gun rights, isn't about that type of issue. It is, honestly, about talking about the idea that the reasons why these people have done these things, have done them, or at least how we can interpret them, or even go on to the point of actually looking at the reasons that they actually done this themselves, and us actually commenting on it, and realising that these are reasonings for people doing this, and understanding them. We try to do this with the versions of extremists from Islamic terrorists, for instance, where we try to understand and de-radicalisation and try to stop the extremists. Why are we not trying to do that on the right? Why are we not trying to do that on the white supremacy scale? Why is it that we just turn a blind eye? Now, I don't mean that we turn a blind eye and say that they don't exist, but it seems to me that when it's brought up that these people have done these things... For these reasons, there's a lot of people on the right that don't actually address it and think that it's blown out of proportion or there's a conspiracy theory behind it that it's all predicated by this aspect of trying to discredit the white race. Fine. If you believe all of that, then that's fine. I have one question to actually ask all of you that do actually think that if you do. If that's the case, and you think that it's a conspiracy theory to discredit the white race, then why aren't you discrediting the idea in themselves of white supremacy? The reason why I ask that question, and it may be a silly question to ask some people, but the reason why I ask that question is, is that if you are saying that you want to show an internal critique of your own political aspirations or ideas, should we say, then doesn't it come to a point where you should be critiquing this and destroying the idea of it? Now, I'm not trying to say guilt by association, but if you don't want to even to look at the reasoning behind it and understand the reasoning behind it, do you actually want to stop it? And that's not a hyperbolic question. It's an actual question. To the point of actually saying to you guys that are watching this video, do you want to stop it? Do you want to understand the at least the reasons behind it and actually understand the reason behind it and maybe stop the radicalization of people on the right and on white supremacist side? Wouldn't that be something worth talking about? So I'm very hopeful with this video that I can at least start a conversation that we can do this. But with that being said, let's get into the video, shall we? Unfortunately, in this time and day and age, there seems to be a lot of violence. And there seems to be 
Lots of violence that comes from all sides and a lot of anger in general. This video is not to critique one side and say one side is worse than the other, and it's not to say that the other sides are even comparable to others at all. This video is more to do with the idea that if we don't talk about the actual genesis of these ideas and why these violence seems to occur, then we are always going to be doomed to repeat the violences no matter what legislation that we try to put into place to be able to stop them. The reason why I think the way that I do on this is if you look at the way that Islamic radicalization occurs, which is done online mostly and done in clerics and places like that, then you could transfer that type of ideology and indoctrination into the idea of white supremacy. Now, does this mean that I think that the whole of the left's ideas on white supremacy and how everybody that is in power has this in inert version and idea of white supremacy? No. No, it doesn't. Does this mean that I think there are people that are pushing forms of identity politics and white supremacy as a political notion? Yes. Yes, I do. Does that mean that I think that it's a political prowess comparable to others and has so many people that follow it? I wouldn't say that there's lots of people that follow it, but as you can honestly say, that if you have one or two or three people that follow it and go down that route of radicalization, then those one, two, three, four people causes a hell of a lot of damage and problems for the rest of society. So this in itself means that we do have to have a conversation about the radicalization of our peoples. And I do mean peoples, I'm not trying to limit this to one form of race, as it could be any form of indoctrine that decides that radicalization and terrorist sympathies are prevalent or desirable. But if we don't talk about the actual reasoning behind this, then we are never going to actually understand it, we're never going to be able to stop it, and we're never going to be able to offer an alternative to the people that do follow this doctrine. The best form of disinfectant is to bring it into the light. And that's what I hope to do about this video, is I hope to be able to bring this into the light so people on all sides can't just say that it's to do with a form of conspiracy theory. And for the people that do think that, that even if it is, maybe we should address the idea of the radicalization and get to the root of the problem and actually deal with the people that are being radicalized. Maybe stop the theory by that point. Stop the radicalization of people that believe in that nonsense. I can tell that this is gonna be one of those videos in where I'm going to get a lot of stick for this, no matter what side of the fence that I'm going to fool myself on. But it's a video that needs to be done. The conversation in itself has taken so polarizing opposites that there is no middle ground. There is no way of trying to sort this out. One half doesn't even want to talk about the actual situation. The other half just wants to take the actual guns away from people and not talk about the cause of why this is happening. I want to try and bring people back into the forefront of understanding the reasoning why people do this. Because the tools in which they use to cause this genocide, an idea of killing people and terrorism, doesn't matter what tool they use. It matters about the ideology in which they are implementing it from and acting because of. So let's actually get into what I have actually found and the reasons why I think this needs to be talked about, ladies and gentlemen. Before I go any further in the video, I would like to let people know that at this moment in time, I am going to now focus on the El Paso shooting. The reason why I'm going to focus on that is because we actually have a manifesto from the person who actually is able to give their thoughts, their reasonings behind it, and it is not conjecture from other people now some people would say that the california shooting the the garlic festival shooting is a case of it being white supremacy now the fbi themselves have actually said that it can't really determine whether it was right or left in that aspect it comes more to a point of he's quoting right-leaning stuff and white supremacist stuff but doesn't actually go into detail why it is that so the reason why I am focusing on the El Paso shooting is simply because there is a manifesto. 
The reason why I preface this before going straight into it is I am going to show it. I am going to show the actual manifesto and I'm going to read parts of it. The reasons why I am going to read part of it is not to glorify the manifesto. It is not to show the facts of, oh, look at this interesting piece of writing either. It is to look at the piece of writing and show the indoctrination in which this person unfortunately went under and was part of. And I don't think it was just indoctrination in itself from the media or the radicalization of social media pundits. But those are my opinions. I would very much like to go through this manifesto. So if you don't want to look at the manifesto, but you just want to listen to what's going on and so forth, then please just let us listen and just carry on. If you do want to turn off, then that's your prerogative. But this is a conversation, as I said before. It needs to happen. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is by listening to the ideas that this person actually had. Again, to YouTube and to all the people that are listening or watching this, this is not me saying that I agree with any of his ideas. I do not. I am vehemently against all of the ideas that he has espoused in his manifesto. But it needs to be shown. It needs to be discussed it needs to be talked about in open dialogue. And I'm hoping that this video will actually be the catalyst to actually being able to have sensible conversations and rooting out the cause for situations like this and El Paso directly. The other shootings, I cannot say categorically the reasonings behind any of them. But the El Paso one, yeah, I can say for definite what way that's gone. And that has and is due to white supremacy, without a shadow of a doubt. Now, as I said, I'm going to go into the manifesto now. So if you are of a disposition where you don't want to listen or talk about it, then you are free to leave. For everyone else, let's dive in and let's take a journey into madness, shall we? So now we move on to the manifesto. And... Somehow he decides that he's going to just support the Christchurch shooter and his manifesto for that. Interesting in itself, right? But moving on to his actual reasonings, I suppose, if you could call it that. This attack is a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Again, you could say something along the lines of the hyperbolic language that is being used or the hypersensitivity or the hyperfocusing of language by a particular political figures or even social media pundits or even pundits in general but the problem is that with that sensationalizing and hyper focusing on just one aspect also doesn't point out that the fact that other signs also do the exact same thing with the hyperbolic nature and does also cause radicalization not to this extent but of radicalization on their own side as well remember that this is about radicalization, not just about the idea of white supremacy. So apparently he goes on to say that they are the instigators and not him. Which, again, I don't really understand how that could ever be the fact, when in actual fact all they're doing is emigrating into the country from another. You could argue that they are doing everything in bad faith and whatever and they're illegal and whatnot, but generally they are just emigrating. And just trying to get into a better country. That's not instigation of an invasion. That just means lots of people moving at once. And as the fact of them being an instigator. How can they be an instigator? When you're the one that's doing the responding. And elevating the level. Meaning that you're instigating this. You're the one that is causing this. And doing this. In essence and in practicality. You are the instigator. He goes on to say that he's simply defending his country from cultural and ethnic replacement brought on by an invasion. Yes, there are complete and utter parallels between the great replacement. Some people will think this statement is hypocritical because of the nearly complete ethnic and cultural destruction brought to the Native Americans by our European ancestors. Some people would. Some people would say that the comparison is completely and utterly stupid. B, 
because, you know, the Europeans did actually invade. They were invading and they did push out the Native Americans. They didn't do it slowly. They didn't do it by taking over. They literally just ran through with a steamroller along and guns. But, you know, history doesn't need to be accurate. just needs to fit my narrative. But this doesn't... This... <laughs> sorry, completely lost there. But this just reinforces my point. The natives didn't take the invasion of Europeans seriously. They did for a very, very long time. And to the point of them thinking and realising that they couldn't actually beat them because they were being outnumbered. They were actually fighting a war against them for a very long time. They ended up signing treaties. God, how the hell can an Englishman know more about your history as an American? Just, wow. And now, what's left is just a shadow of what was. My motives for this attack are not at all personal. Actually, the Hispanic community was not my target before I read The Great Replacement. Literally, white supremacist material and indoctrination, and in this instance, probably a form of radicalization that probably needs to be looked at. I'm guessing that there are other avenues that led up to that point as well. But you know, he's directly saying that if he didn't read The Great Replacement, he wouldn't have targeted Hispanic people. You know, don't take my word for it. Read it. So now we're going to move on to the political reasons why he says that he has done this. So let's start at the beginning. In short, America is rotting from the inside out. I don't exactly know what he means by that. Is that the fact of it rotting out from the corruption or from letting people coming into the country and stuff like that? I, I don't know what he means by that. But let's carry on and read. And peaceful means to stop this seems to be nearly impossible. Okay. You're saying that you believe that America is rotting from the inside out. And you believe that there is no way to stop this using any peaceful means or democratic means or democracy in general. But yet you going to shoot up a Walmart is somehow going to stop America from writing from the inside out. Okay, that that seems logical in some shape or form. The inconvenient truth is that our leaders, both Democrats and Republicans, have been failing us for decades. It depends on what you mean by failing us, as you haven't actually given us any reasons Apart from the idea of trying to say that you think that they are importing ethnic and cultural diversity to replace the white race. At least that's how I'm interpreting this. Which seems redundant and pretty stupid. They are either complacent or involved in one of the biggest betrayals of the American public in our history. The takeover of the United States government by unchecked corporations. Okay. Are these corporations bringing in more people? Or is corporations a name for something else entirely? Like pro-cooperation means pro-immigration? I wonder if that's a synonym for what he's actually meaning. But... We'll get into the fact of him maybe misunderstanding what corporations is to what he actually talks about. But let's, let's carry on. He says I could write a 10 page essay on the damage these corporations have caused. But here is what is important. Due to the death of the baby boomers, the increasingly anti-immigration rhetoric of the Democratic Party, of the right, and the ever-increasing Hispanic population. America will soon become a one-party state. The Democrat Party will own America and they know it. Okay, so beforehand you said, or wrote, that you don't think that there is any 
safe or peaceful way of venting your idea about immigration laws, for instance. And then you say that the right has anti-immigration rhetoric, but yet you don't think that there's a peaceful way of dealing with it. I'm, I'm lost. I'm really lost in the understanding and justification that you try to give for this. Even though I will say this in general for the benefit of the people at the back, there is no justification at all for this. Just his. And I want to understand it, to understand the reasons why somebody can do this. But it seems like it's the ramblings of kind of a crazy person. But those are my opinions. Let's, let's carry on, shall we? So, they have already began the transitions by pandering heavily to the Hispanic voting bloc in the first Democratic debate. Do you mean that they're pandering to the Hispanic vote in particular areas? Because the Hispanic population, as far as I'm aware, is quite focused on particular areas in the South. If they are pandering to a particular racial vote, that means that they are taking over the country peacefully, in your opinion. But you are going to fight them with the idea of violence and shooting the Hispanics. That that doesn't make sense. That the uh, that just that doesn't make sense. They intend to use open borders, free healthcare for illegals, censorship, and more to enact a political coup by importing and then legalizing millions of new voters. Uh, oh, my head, that, that kind of hurts. That kind of hurts. They intend to open the borders because they believe that everybody should be allowed to join the country. That's not a part of the idea of a great replacement. Now, I argue for somebody that believes in the idea and sanctity of borders. So don't think that I am arguing from the point of thinking that the borders should be open. I'm not. But to understand their point of view and their reasoning is to understand the argumentations against it. So when you have them saying that they are for open borders, they are for open borders so people can enter the country, not to ethnically and culturally replace you. Uh, as for healthcare for illegals, look, I am somebody that believes in a mixed economy or a, a, a mixed bag. So somebody that believes in having a national health care and somebody that believes in having both a private health care alongside it. So I'm not going to say that with health care is a good idea or a bad idea or a state run one is a good idea or a bad one. The point on this that I would make is though, they are trying to say that they believe that health care is a right and should be paid for by the state using taxation. That doesn't mean that they believe that it's specifically free for illegals. They believe that it is a right for everybody. So again, understand the point of argumentation and argue that point rather than going to shoot people. Maybe you would actually change more minds. You could argue that censorship is actually working on both sides at this minute in time. So left and right are actually being censored. So I don't understand why you would focus on the censorship of the right. Both sides are being censored quite heavily, especially on YouTube. It's to do with the topics, not to do with the political stance of the YouTubers. They don't have enough time to check that, unfortunately. But carrying on, they're trying to do a political cue, a coup sorry, by importing them and legalizing all of them to millions of new voters. That's happened throughout decades of having people that are coming into the country and trying to win over their votes. But yet, after generations of them being there, their own politics changes. You see that in the United Kingdom very, very regularly. But you know, I'm sure that your conspiracy theory will completely and utterly come forth and the Great Replacement will completely and utterly replace absolutely everybody. I'm, I'm sure about that. Very, very sure. For the benefit of YouTube and people in the back, that was a hyperbolic joke. With policies like these, the Hispanic support for Democrats will likely become 
nearly unanimous in the future. Again, I don't see why. Just because the, they've been able to go into the country, you also have a lot of Hispanics. You also have a lot of uh, people of colour, black people. You also have Asians that all voted for the Republicans and Trump, as well as the white vote. So to say that you think all of them are going to vote Democrat is kind of retarded. And absolutely not true by any sort of form of statistics at all. Somehow you've been indoctrinated to think this. That's the point in which I'm trying to go with this. That this is coming down from indoctrination. This is coming down from rhetoric in themselves. And no, to people on the left. I don't think that this is the case just because of Donald Trump. I don't think that it's a case of all political pundits and everything else like that. I think that there is a subgroup of uh, white supremacists and the idea of people that keep on pushing this. But I don't think that it is inherently put down to Trump's rhetoric. You could argue, from a leftist point of view on this, that you do have the aspect of white supremacists themselves that are using this rhetoric. And you could say that because they recognise certain words in what Donald Trump is saying, that that makes them think that they're being supported. But in actual fact, thank God, Donald Trump recently come out and absolutely condemned white supremacy in its entirety. There is no media coverage on that to say that he's supporting white supremacy now because he's condemned it on national television but that's not going to get in the way of a narrative but that's not what this is about again this is about the indoctrination and about the idea that people are being radicalized and it could be the aspect that the internet is the breeding ground for this radicalization but we can't have a talk about this if people on the right don't want to talk about it and people on the left are saying take away the guns before they even work out what the actual cause is for this that's happened. The heavy Hispanic population in Texas will make us a democratic stronghold. Losing Texas and a few other states with heavy Hispanic population to the Democrats is all it would take for them to win nearly every presidential election. Again, the actual demographics would not suggest that that would actually happen. And you having the prejudice to say that all Mexicans or all Hispanics or all Puerto Ricans or all Hondurans are going to vote a particular way and block vote is completely and utterly ridiculous. And even if they did all vote, even for the first five or even for the first ten years, the generations when they would have other people coming in, as well as them living there for a while, would also change their politics. But again, I don't expect you to actually think this theory out and realise how prejudiced that this actual thinking becomes and hate-filled that this thinking actually is. You just want to go and blame somebody for all of the problems that you think is happening to you. That's the problem here. The indoctrination has gone to a point of them being and thinking that everything is then about them and they have to do something and they're the ones to do something and they're the ones to change it all. This is how radicalization and extremism is bred and this is explaining exactly it. So carrying on, although the Republican Party is also terrible, many factions within the Republican Party are pro-corporation. Interesting term again, let's see what he means by that. Pro-corporations over our future. So the Democrats are nearly unanimous with their support of immigration, while the Republicans are divided over it. At least with Republicans, the process of mass immigration and citizenship can be generally reduced. Okay, so let's just reread that last little bit because I may have jumped a line. The Republican Party are pro-corporation. Pro-corporation equals pro-immigration. That's what he means by pro-corporations when he says that earlier. Well, the biggest betrayal of the, is the corporations. He means the biggest betrayal is the pro-immigration. All right, we're going to move on to the next part of his manifesto. So before that we move on to this point, there is a whole economic section to his manifesto. The reason why I'm not 
covering the economics is because no matter what ideas that he has, the thought of everything that goes wrong economically and any sort of form of futuristic ideas that he has about economics is all based on his hatred of Hispanics, specifically Hispanics for some reason. So I'm going to completely miss that. And if you want to go and find the actual manifesto, you can probably find it easy enough. I did. If not, whatever. But I'm now going to carry on and read his personal thoughts and his personal reasons for doing this. Again, YouTube, the reason why I'm doing this is not to glorify the shooter. I am doing this to point out that people on the right need to accept that this person was a white supremacist and we need to completely and utterly condemn him for his actions. Now with that being said, my whole life I have been preparing for a future that currently doesn't exist. The job of my dreams will likely be automated. Yeah, that has nothing to do with Hispanics though, that has everything to do with technology and how it's advancing. I don't see how that, even if correct, based on a race taking your job away. But hey, let's carry on. Hispanics will take control of the local and state government of my beloved Texas. Okay. Changing policy to better suit their needs. The same as most people try to do and try to vote in different people that represent their wants and needs. But hey, we can't have those pesky Hispanics doing it, can we? For some strange reason. They will turn Texas into an instrument of a political coup which will hasten the destruction of our country. Wow, you really do have a really high opinion of how you think that this is going to destroy the USA as a whole. Even though immigration has been coming steadily for years upon years and would still accept a lot of people coming in from Hispanic countries or South American countries, especially considering most of them are refugees, but just actually need to go through a legal point of entry. But hey, the actual point and actual aspects of life don't seem to matter with a conspiracy theory, do they? So apparently the environment is getting worse by the year. If you take nothing else from this document, remember this, Inaction is a choice. Right, so if people are actually deciding that they are going to, let's say, vote for a Republican to try and quell immigration and try and get some form of traditionalism in, if you, if you so want to put that way, or even some form of Democrat that is probably not as stringent on immigration but could be on for borders and whatnot, that apparently is an inaction. Not 100% sure you understand what an inaction is. But, you know, let's, let's carry on. I can no longer bear the shame of inaction, knowing that our founding fathers have endowed me with the rights needed to save our country from the brink of destruction. N n no. No. That's not what they gave you the right to do and the right to bear arms. I know that it says that you have the right to bear arms against a foreign and domestic threats to the country, but immigrants are not, now say this with me now, are not a threat to the country. But let's carry on. Our European comrades don't have the gun rights needed to repel the millions of invaders that plague their country. They have no choice but to sit by and watch their countries burn. Look, countries are not burning. There are lots of problems with immigration and overcrowding and with that type of issues and how the cultures are not merging because of the mass immigration and mass exodus. But the countries themselves are not burning. It is over hyper sensationalized what you're talking about. 
Let's carry on. Let's, let's carry on reading. This. America can only be destroyed from the inside out. If our country falls, it will be the fault of traitors. O okay. Right. Let's, let's carry on. This is why I see my actions as faultless. No. Your actions are predicated by hate, fear, and the idea of not being able to be in control of yourself. You have been indoctrinated to believe that the root of your problems in your life are all based on somehow the Hispanic people. And you've decided to go and take it out on people that cannot influence the change that you would want to have been influenced and changed in the first place. You killed innocent people on the idea of because they're Mexican or Hispanic in total. So, they're not faultless actions, are they? You are completely at fault, for even by your own ideas and doctrine, and I'm not condoning this, but even targeting the wrong people, you are completely and utterly at fault for what you have done. And you are not faultless. Because this isn't an act of imperialism, but an act of preservation, Again, even if what you said was correct, you killed innocent people on the basis of them being Hispanic, Latin Americans. So America is full of hypocrites who will blast my action as the sole result of racism and hatred of other countries, despite the extensive evidence of the problems these invaders cause and will cause. Just... Wow. The thing is that most immigrants are not invaders. You, you could argue different gangs of MS-13 and so on and so forth. But in generality, most of them are not invaders. They're not trying to invade the country and take the country over. Even with people like MS-13, who are horrible people and are not condoning anything that they do or say or whatever. But even with MS-13, they are not trying to invade the country to take the country over. Even the most heinous and horriblest people that are trying to gain entrance illegally into the border, or over the border, are not trying to invade your goddamn country. People who are hypocrites because they support imperialistic wars that have caused the loss of tens of thousands of Americans' lives and untold numbers of civilians' lives. Okay, let's just carry on. Because that's just a whole lot of hypocrisy right there that I don't even want to delve into. That I could just do a video on by itself. But let's, let's carry on. The argument that mass murder is okay when it is state sanction is absurd. Our government has killed a whole lot more people for a whole lot less. Okay... Even if you're against every single war that has ever happened and you think that all, only the wars that have been pushed since the Second World War or after the Second World War have only been from a political nature. Arguments on both sides, not saying either or or. But even if you could say that all of them are, they didn't commit mass murder as they had a reason to go and, should we say, fight a war for them, or made up reasons for it. You just went down to a Walmart and shot Hispanic people because you dislike Hispanic people. There is no justification to that. So this is the last section of his manifesto. And unfortunately it gets even worse. And if anybody had any sort of idea or inkling that, oh, this isn't too bad. He hasn't really gone off into the weeds too much of going off against different people. One, what the hell have you been listening to? And two, it really does get worse from here. So again, YouTube... I am not condoning or trying to push this as anything that's good. I am literally trying to go through this as somebody who is right-leaning and point out that I completely and utterly disagree with almost everything that he has said and I would like to condemn it by showing it and bringing it into the light and how full of hate and bigotry and prejudice that this actually was pushing.
even if other non-immigrant targets would have a greater impact than Hispanics, I can't bring myself to kill my fellow Americans. So he doesn't see Hispanic people, no matter how many generations they may have been here for, as American people. That's... Let's just continue with that one. Even the Americans that seem hell-bent on destroying our country. Even if they are shameless race mixers. Massive polluters. Haters of our collective values, etc. So, let's just go through that one last time. Even if they are shameless race mixers. There is nothing wrong with race mixing. There is nothing wrong with falling in love or procreating with somebody of a different ethnic background. Nothing wrong with race mixing in itself. Nothing. To say there's that as a point for trying to go and kill people because of them having who they fall in love with predicated by you can't do this because of them being a different race is absolutely totalitarian and absolutely a point of racism. There is no ifs, there is no buts. That in itself proves to the point of racism. One day they will see the error of their waves. Either when American patriots fail to reform our country and it collapses or when we save it by going around and shooting innocent people on the basis of their Hispanic. Don't think you're going to save anything even if your justifications were correct. But, you know, stupidity, indoctrination, this is where it leads to. The idea that everything, all of your problems, all of your actions need to be focused onto one set of individuals and that set of individuals, if you kill them, will make everything correct and everything better. That's not how this works. You cannot generalise race by that. You cannot generalise groups of people like that. It doesn't work that way. But, you know, I suppose to pun my name on this one, and I didn't mean it as cheaply as it sounds, common sense doesn't seem to actually prevail in this. Because he's lost all of it due to the indoctrination and not having his ideas challenged rather than just being told he's this or that. And no, that's not trying to say that we should accept his ideas, but bringing the ideas into light and actually explaining the reasons why he's an idiot actually is a good idea to stop the indoctrination and the level of extremism that is obviously being built up. And no, I'm not trying to say that there's a mass conspiracy where there's tons of white supremacists everywhere. If this actually happens and the indoctrination is happening, then we need to address it. But they will see the error of their ways, I promise y'all that. Because he thinks that he's going to change everything by shooting up innocent people. And the reason why I'm being graphic and reiterating what he did is because even if he thought or others think that there is a justification or even an understanding or re resemblance of a justification, which I'm not saying that there is, for goddamn hell of it, please, people, there isn't a justification for what he's done in this instance. Nothing justifies this. But he's trying to say that he's going to do something about it. He is so indoctrinated that he believes that he alone is going to be the ignition to be able to start something off. I am against race mixing because it destroys genetic diversity and creates identity problems. No. Humans create the identity problems. Humans create the identity problems. If you have a problem with people that are race mixing, you create the identity problems, not them. Also, because it's completely unnecessary and selfish. What? To fall in love with somebody and not judge them by their race is apparently selfish and is apparently completely unnecessary so you're literally telling people who they can and cannot fall in love with depending on what race they are that sounds like a great idea carrying on second and third generation hispanics from 
interracial unions at much higher rates than average. So what? That means that they're willing to integrate? Surely that is a good thing. That means that they, in your opinion, would assimilate to your version of culture quicker. What's wrong with that? Yet another reason to send them back, what, that they form uh, interracial unions at much higher rates and integrate with your society much quicker, is a reason to send them back. What kind of asinine backward think- never mind, it's from Texas. Joke, people, joke. Cultural and racial diversity is largely temporary. If it's so temporary, why did you go off and think that they were ethnically and culturally replacing you then? Never mind, never mind. I'd expect to actually get a decent answer, but I see that I'm not, for obvious reasons. Cultural diversity diminishes as stronger and or more appealing cultures overtake weaker and or undesirable ones. Are you literally arguing against your previous points? You are literally trying to say that you think that cultures and diversity would naturally pick the stronger culture and diversity. I'm not sure if you understand the idiocy in that. I'm going to go and fight the power simply because I think that we're being ethnically and culturally erased or replaced, sorry. But, in a paragraph later on, I'm saying that the stronger culture and racial diversity will, that is more appealing, will take over and be the strongest culture that takes predication or precedent. But, uh, okay, this this really does not make sense. It's just a point of hatred, isn't it? An indoctrination, which is why I wanted to cover this. That this has no sense. It is nonsensical. It is contradictory even in its simplistic nature that it is put down. But, you know, let's that's, that's carry on. Racial diversity will disappear as either race mixing or genocide will take place. Okay, they're um very different. Very different. I'm sure that there is some form of middle ground. I'm, I'm sure there's something that you could do that's not genocide. But <laughs> what the fuck do I know? But the idea of deporting or murdering all non-white Americans is horrific. Okay, so why did you go and murder the Hispanics in your area if you think that murdering non-Americans or non-white Americans specifically in your words is horrific? Just, I'm going to move on because that just hurt my head a little bit there. Many have been here at least as long as the whites and have done as much to build our country. Okay, so why did you go in? Oh my Jesus! I literally lost a brain cell. Ow! The best solution to this, according to him, for now would be to divide America into confederacies of territories, with at least one territory for each race. Okay, just. Idiotic! This physical separation would nearly eliminate race mixing and improve social unity by granting each race self-determination within their respective territories. Okay, so you're trying to say that the separation would eliminate race mixing. So your problem isn't the culture then, all the different races that come into America, you are specifically against race mixing. Okay. That's... That's just... I'm, again, moving on. Again, moving on. I just... I just can't. My death is likely inevitable. Sorry, YouTube, but... Unfortunately, it wasn't. 
if I'm not killed by the police, then I'm probably, I'm not going to read any more of that because it's all a case of him trying to turn himself into a martyr. I'm not going to bother reading it. You can read the screen, obviously, you can pause it and do whatever you want, but I'm not giving credence to turning him into some sort of fucking martyr. So remember, it is not cowardly to pick low-hanging fruit. Uh, okay. Don't attack heavily guarded areas to fulfill your su super soldier cod fantasy. Oi, oi, oi. Every trope is coming out. Attack low security targets. How about don't attack anything? Hear that, YouTube? Not saying attack anything. Don't attack anything. Even though you might outgun a security guard or a policeman, they likely beat you in armor, training, and numbers. Do not throw away your life on an unnecessarily dangerous target. How about don't throw away your life on a suicidal, stupid mission that isn't actually, even if you have all of this justification using air quotes, to do it. Because all you're doing is killing innocent people and not proving or doing anything of your... Oh, I don't even want to give this credence. Your theory, it's substance. I, oh, it, it's really annoying the level of indoctrination and the level of focusing and trying to blame everything on a group that you think is the problem even though that you have just said beforehand that you know that they integrate hell of a lot quicker than other aspects of immigrants and how the, the superior cultures themselves would flourish to the top if you think your culture is superior why would it matter then but you know these are just ideas that seem to actually float around in somebody that I think I'm sane enough to say that. Sane. My ideology has not changed for several years, so it's been a long time in the opinion of him that Hispanics are the problem. Even though he said at the top that it is a case of reading a certain paper or book, The Great Replacement, was the reason why he decided to attack the Hispanic people. But you know, Contradictions. This whole paper hasn't been a contradiction. My opinions on automation, immigration, and the rest predate Trump and his campaign for president. I put this here because some people will blame the president for certain or certain presidential candidates for the attack. This is not the case. I know that the media will probably call me a white supremacist anyway and blame Trump's rhetoric. The media is infamous for fake news. Their reaction to this attack will likely just confirm that. I mean, you are a right white supremacist. You are saying that you think that your culture is superior and you want to preserve your genetic diversity because God forbid that people fall in love with people that they want to rather than you telling them that they have to be done by race. But, you know, as for the idea of the infamous fake news, uh, they're not fake news if they're reporting on this and calling you a white supremacist. Again, I don't blame Trump's rhetoric. Trump never said go and attack these people. This is this person's idea and indoctrination from somebody else. But hey, let's continue with this. Many people think that the fight for America is already lost. They couldn't be more wrong. This is just the beginning for the fight for America in Europe. I am honoured to head the fight to reclaim my country. If anybody didn't think that this was a form of indoctrination, and you didn't want to read the whole manifesto, those three to four sentences right there, that last paragraph, if you will, completely and utterly encapsulates the form of indoctrination. He honestly thinks that he's going to be a martyr for some sort of cause of stopping the race mixing, stopping the immigration and stopping this and stopping that and and whatnot. Just listen to that level of indoctrination just one more time, please, if you indulge me in this. Many people think that the fight for America is already lost. They couldn't be more wrong. This is just the beginning of the fight for America in Europe. Remember, he thought that he was going to perish in this attack. He thought that he was going to die. 
or be killed rather, death by a police officer, death by a cop, if you will. And he thinks that he's honoured to head of the fight, to be the figurehead, to be the martyr, to be the reason why people rose up. Now, if you don't think that that's indoctrination on any sort of level, I can't help you. But I am going to end this video on a couple of thoughts that I'd really like to get out. But for everybody that wants to end the video at this point, because I know that it's a long video, I will summarise very quickly. This documentation proves that he hated Mexicans and Hispanic people in general. He hated the idea of race mixing. He blamed the idea of all of this on the Great Replacement and being ethnically and racially fought out or pushed out or killed or replaced. And all of this was the predication for what he's done and changing his ideas onto that. If this isn't the definition of a form of white supremacy, the idea of preserving the white race, or his idea of what the right race is, then I don't know what other form of evidence you need to be able to prove that to yourself. And again, this is something that needs to be talked about and put out into the forefront. Am I saying that anybody that talks about immigration is a racist? No. Am I saying that anybody that wants to talk about an idea of an invasion of how many people are coming across is a white supremacist and is then for going to be a racist? No. They have legitimate concerns with the number of mass immigration that is trying to come into the country. Yes, you could argue that the term invasion is hyperbolic, is cause for a sensationalization. You could say that, and I'm not going to disagree with you, but that's not an incitement. As I said, I'm going to leave with some more ideas and some more final thoughts. But I will end the video here for you guys if you want to. That is basically what I wanted to say. But I want to go into more depth. So thank you very much. And now I'm going to go into my final thoughts. I really want to point out to people that this video wasn't in its place to try and demigrate the right. It wasn't trying to validate the left's opinion of white supremacy and how it's all around us and using that conspiracy theory to justify a political talking point. This video was in essence to be able to say that, look, there are these people that are completely and utterly entrenched in their indoctrination of the idea of white supremacy. There are these types of people that you could argue may be mentally unstable or not being able to put together an actual coherent thought without it contradicting as we have seen in the manifesto that we used today. But most importantly, this is the video to show the fact that we actually need to talk about these issues, to bring it to the forefront, to be able to show that there are people that are in these instances that actually are thinking and doing this. Now, that's not an indictment on the right, and again, it's not a validation of the left. This is a point of being able to show people that we do need to address these situations. And to address these situations, that does not mean talking about gun control when you have a more of an important aspect of the indoctrination and the ideologies that lead people to do this. You don't go and talk about Islamic terrorism and say that they need to ban guns when an Islamic terrorist has used them, Orlando shooting, unfortunately, as an example. The point is that you try to find out the reasons why these people have done what they have done, understand the reasoning behind it as faulty and flawed as it is but you understand it and once you understand it you can then fight against it properly and that's not banning things to stop people from doing other things because people that are willing to go and kill people for the belief in their indoctrination of their ideology are going to go and do it hence why islamic terrorists will use almost anything when they're indoctrinated far enough into that ideology it goes the same way again this is not comparing apples to oranges it is drawing an analogy and a comparison to show you that the ideology itself is what's important to be able to discern the importance of the ideology and show that these people are being led they are being indoctrinated in these thoughts and practices.
we see that this person unfortunately was under the idea that race mixing was banned and unfortunately with the idea of race mixing is bad then predicated all of the rest of his ideology and hatred towards a certain group of people and took it out on those groups of people and this was all done from the ideology of hatred prejudice racism the idea of my culture my race is superior even if he doesn't want to admit that that is exactly what it is my race is superior according to him therefore i have the right to go and murder apparently a justification of doing something because he believes that he needs to instigate something to become a martyr for his ideology yet all he has done is killed innocent people that's it and i don't mean that to belittle the actual people that have unfortunately died in this shooting i don't mean it in that aspect or that way of sounding i mean it into the aspect of it actually being his ideology hasn't been pushed now i don't want his ideology pushed it's more of a case of saying that he has done nothing to prove or disprove what he thought was actually correct or not as it says on the screen he was so indoctrinated and so planned for this attack he drove over 600 miles to get to where he wanted to go to actually be in the highest density of Hispan uh, hispanics where you have over 80 percent of the residency as hispanics this wasn't done to prove a point of going against corporations going against the democrats policy this wasn't done to go against the fact that republicans are not doing what i want them to do this was purely and utterly done on the idea of hatred and fighting against that hatred is what's important and the way that you fight against that hatred is showing those people why they're wrong and the only way of showing those people how they are wrong is unfortunately allowing them to speak their mind however heinous and horrible and however much it is a hatred that they are spewing unfortunately it needs to be spewed so it can be countered otherwise it festers and it turns into the point of self doctrine self-indoctrination as he probably unfortunately went through i don't have too much to, else to say on this video apart from this isn't a right versus left this isn't a guns versus non no guns this is pointing out that we as people need to find out the reasoning behind these types of attacks and instead of trying to find a plaster to fit onto these attacks actually root it out and cut it out which is by destroying the ideology that fuels it now with that being said ladies and gentlemen i bid you farewell i bid you adieu and if anybody wants to talk to me about my views on this i am free on twitter i am free on any platform in which that you wish to get me that's in the links down below I bid you adieu. Take care. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. My fellow Americans, this morning, our nation is overcome with shock, horror, and sorrow. This weekend, more than 80 people were killed or wounded in two evil attacks. One Saturday morning in El Paso, Texas, a wicked man went to a Walmart store where families were shopping with their loved ones. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. We have asked the FBI to identify all further resources they need to investigate and disrupt hate crimes and domestic terrorism, whatever they need. 
we must recognize that the Internet has provided a dangerous avenue to radicalize disturbed minds and perform demented acts. We must shine light on the dark recesses of the Internet and stop mass murders before they start. The Internet, likewise, is used for human trafficking, illegal drug distribution, and so many other heinous crimes. The perils of the Internet and social media cannot be ignored, and they will not be ignored. And we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. We must stop or substantially reduce this, and it has to begin immediately. We must reform our mental health laws to better identify mentally disturbed individuals who may commit acts of violence and make sure those people not only get treatment, but when necessary, involuntary confinement. Our future is in our control. America will rise to the challenge. We will always have, and we always will, win. The choice is ours, and ours alone. It is not up to mentally ill monsters. It is up to us. If we are able to pass great legislation after all of these years, we will ensure that those who were attacked will not have died in vain.